Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online interview series. Today, we want to talk for the first time with American Future Fuel Corporation, but you know the CEO very well. It's David Suda. David, good to see you again in your new role. And how are you, my friend? All good? So good. Great to see you again. And <laughs> uh, excited to be in a space that everybody seems excited about. It's just uh, really great uh, to be back, Jochen. Absolutely. Super. I like it. And uh, that we are uh, yeah, again doing here interviews together and working together. Also, I want to say upfront uh, for disclosure reasons, I am a shareholder in this company. And uh, yeah, I must say, as you always know, um, and I always said it the last years, I'm really positive for uranium. Now we have to break out in the uranium price. And if you remember, um, I always said if we are moving above the $60, 62 now we are 72 to 73 this morning in the broker price. Things are done. The uranium train has left the station. And so it's fantastic that we have the chance now to get an insight into American future fuel. And uh, David, you guys are, I would say, in the hotspot of uranium for the future. And that is the U.S. in New Mexico. Tell us a bit about it. Oh, it's just an amazing opportunity for me. Uh, you've been talking about uranium longer than uh, I've had the opportunity. <laughs> so um, you're a first mover. You're always a first mover, Jochen. And uh, so we give you credit for that. And uh, look, I was attracted to this because um, I see this backdrop, right? There's a bifurcation in the market. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the market dynamics of uranium. I think we all agree that uh, there's not enough of it and the uh, price is going higher. But in the United States, there's a developing and special theme, which is, uh, you know, you've got a war going on uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Um, there is a movement uh, in, in U.S. politics in Washington. Uh, I experienced it myself uh, as part of a lobby group uh, that went around, um, you know, Congress and the Senate. And, and we heard about uh, bills being passed, you know, to potentially even ban uh, uranium imports from Russia. So recognizing that we have to build uh, a, a green bridge, uh, you know, the, the, we're not just going to be uh, driving Teslas and, and having everything electrified uh, without um, some bridge. Uh, everybody <laughs> everybody uh, agrees uranium is a solution to this. So yep. all of a sudden there isn't enough. You know, even the Department of Defense uh, in the U.S. Is, is running out of their supplies. And, um, you know, for... A country um, that has a power grid that's uh, largely dependent on uh, uranium to fuel it, uh, they need to make moves. And so uh, I was able to, uh, you know, get involved with this company that happens to have, um, you know, a historical resource of 20 million pounds of uranium sitting there um, near surface uh, on a lease, which is on private land. Um, you know, it, it's in one of the most uh, prolific um, uranium production uh, belts uh, historically. So it's not like there's never been uranium produced there. It's not like we're not sure if it's there. Um, you know, this is all being done. In fact, um, on our lease, uh, there was a, uh, a mine, so mm -hmm. a past producing mine. So okay. we're uh, super excited to have leverage to this. Super. And you are in New Mexico. That means you are in the U.S. And I think New Mexico is quite famous in the past for uranium, for mining, etc. Right? Yeah. I mean, spectacular um, numbers. As I said, it's, it was highly prolific. Almost 40% yeah. of uh, America's uranium production came from the Grants Mineral Belt, which we're squarely uh, in the middle of. Uh, so, um, yeah, New Mexico is in the U.S. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, super. So what needs to be done? I said, uh, you said already 20 million pounds, but I think that's a historic uh, resource. So for 43, 101, uh, what do you have to do? What needs to be done? Because it looks to me like a bit that you have a really great advantage here. There were a lot of holes were drilled. You know already where is what. So you only need to confirm, right? Yes, of course. Well, we have to be very careful these days in capital markets uh, when we talk about historical resources. Mm -hmm. So um, it is, in fact, a historical resource. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a lot of data uh, to back that up. Of course, uh, 3,500 holes, approximately 300,000 meters of drilling. 
Uh, if we had to estimate the amount of time and the cost of that today, uh, it would be, you know, could take five years and $75 million. So yeah. when I hear, uh, and I've said it before when I've, when I've been with other groups that we're hitting the ground running, like we're really hitting the ground running. And it's, it's funny, if you think of New Mexico and the Roadrunner, we're like the Roadrunner. <laughs> <Meep, meep. laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, super. And uh, uh, just a question to, for our viewers. Is that, uh, are we talking underground? Are we talking open pit? Uh, what, what, what does the, let's so call future deposit look like? So in the past, um, this, this um, the extension of this deposit um, called St. Anthony's, which again, our lease extends over, uh -huh. was mined uh, as an open pit. It's, it's right at the surface. So uh, very simple, um, very efficient. The job that we have in front of us is now to go out and turn this historical resource into a 43101, uh -huh. as, as you mentioned. Uh -huh. And um, I think, you know, uh, our geologist uh, that's working there on the ground running the, the drill program that's currently um, active is just blown away by how, uh, what an opportunity it is you know, to go out uh, onto a property that's new that, you know, people haven't seen or investors haven't been able to, um, to leverage and, and to go uh, drill holes with this unbelievable data set of information, right? So uh, we're not saying it's, it's perfect, uh, but we're saying we're going out and, and we have the opportunity to go and drill holes and duplicate that resource hopefully. So, um, you know, in fact, the, the historical resource is exactly 18.9 mm -hmm. uh, million, million pounds. pounds. So mm -hmm. we believe there's an opportunity for growth, um, you know, and a fairly significant one at that. So we're not, we're not just telling the market, oh, we're going to go out and confirm the historical resource. We're also going to pull on a bunch of levers, um, both uh, with the drill bit uh, and corporately to mm -hmm. grow those pounds. Okay, so will you check also, uh, let's say, more into the depths? Uh, because it looks to me like, as you said, it's open pit. So this is all uh, quite close to the surface. And uh, if, if I look uh, into your uh, presentation here, uh, there is... Uh, Yeah, about the uh, about the exploration potential for Cebolleta. Um large scale exploration potential lies 100 meters under mineralized horizon on the Cebolleta property. Um, so, what what does it look like, or would that be a next step? First, you want to confirm and say, okay, that's all real. What what you have yeah found in the historical resource, um, and then you move on. Yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning that. That's one of the levers that we feel we'll be able to pull on. It's obviously not our first focus, right? Because uh -huh. the easy the easy yards, and, well, they're never easy. Nothing's easy these days. But uh, the the um, the task at hand is to, is to uh, come up with a forty three one hundred one on our historical resource that's um, just below surface. A hundred meters below that, we believe. Um, there is um, uh, a horizon called the West Water Formation, which mm -hmm. hosted um, a tremendous amount of uranium, like mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of pounds. Mm -hmm. And um, that formation has been, um, we have data from that formation at a location uh, on our lease mm -hmm. further to the east. So um, we will definitely look to explore Uh, what lies below where we're drilling right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we'll, we'll test the West Water Formation. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, um, I think we, we call that sort of like a blue sky um, potential. And mm -hmm. it, um, again, you know, investors are uh, happy to have a home base of value, which, you know, is our historical resource that we'll, we'll prove up uh, to 43101. That's, I think... Every company these days, doesn't matter what sector you're in, uranium's hot right now, um, but it, but it, no matter where you are, investors are safer with a home base, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then you can go out and take the swings uh, on, on the blue sky stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, just another, you know, 100 or a couple hundred meters below uh, our deposit, um, we believe there's more opportunity.
Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, I saw also on your presentation that you have like a, f a, f a phase one to four and it runs from, let's say, this year up to 2026, 2027 first quarter. So we talk about a good uh, yeah, 36 months, if you want to call it, maybe three and a half years. Any chance to speed that up a little bit? Because it looks to me like yeah. quite conservative time planning. Yeah. And I mean, we've all, this is a company that... Um, Uh, is is adding uh, a lot of bench strength, uh, both um, you know from a geological, uh, a technical perspective, and and both uh, and also corporately, um, you know people who have built companies, um, successfully sold companies. So uh, our approach is going to be conservative, right? You you know me. We've we've talked in the past. You you've accused me of not you know maybe being uh, as as um, aggressive uh, as, as perhaps uh, we can be. But um, there is an opportunity to speed up that timeline, Jochen, for sure. Uh, okay. It's when we were when we were planning all of this, um, don't forget that this this is a like we're in the first inning of this uranium bull market, right? Mm -hmm. So access to capital is the first thing you think about. Like, you know, how quickly are we going to be able to raise enough money to and, and, and then how quickly can we drill? So, um, you know, now we're seeing a lot of interest and it, maybe uh, that's making me think we can, we can, you know, tighten those timelines down. It also depends on um, what our, um, what our QP who's overseeing, um, you know, who will sign off on the 43101. As we go along, uh, the confidence uh, builds with each hole that matches the, the historical data, the confidence builds. Um, and so we also don't want to assume that we're just going to be, you know, bang on uh, every single hole because this data is uh, some of it is, you know, older. It's like from back from the 1960s. So uh -huh. um, we just want to message the market in a, in a way that's reasonable. Um, and then, you know, we'll we'll work really hard to uh, to to deliver faster. This first phase is already uh, showing success. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm inclined to say, you know, with the market backdrop and also with the results that we're seeing, that we will compress that um, that time frame. Mm -hmm. Super. Um, I saw also uh, your phase one and two development program is approximately $1.6 million. So that leads to the question, what is uh, cash in the bank? Who are your largest shareholders? Uh, what is management share, of course? So our last... Um, Just approximately. Cash balance was three million bucks. We're spending mm -hmm. money because we're drilling, mm -hmm. um, and so and we want to be spending money on drilling. <laughs> and, of course. <laughs> and, and our and our philosophy is to spend most of the money on drilling, mm -hmm. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, our our structure, our um, our shareholders are also uh, you know motivated the same way. Um, you know this is a, a fairly tight structure. Um, there are um, three or four key shareholders. Uh, there's, um, you know, a couple family offices, and also um, there is uh, a corporate shareholder in Encore. Mm -hmm. um, the property was was acquired from uh, Encore, and so uh, they're over 14 percent. So they're they're uh, they're reporting, mm -hmm. and um, obviously uh, we're working with them to to deliver them value. Uh, so. You know that's that's over 11 million shares. We have a, a very good line of sight on almost the entire float. So uh, you know from that perspective, uh, everybody's motivated to work together um, to you know buy more shares and drill more holes and find more uranium and build this company out. I mean we're we're also um, you know very happy to see the backdrop because it's 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 also likely going to put us in a position to go out. And to um, you know, add more to this company, put more meat on the bone, grow okay. it. Okay, super. Last question, because it just uh, came through my mind. What is the advantage that you are on private land? Great question. Thank you. Um, the advantage is that um, you know we don't have some of the other issues, for example, that um, you find globally in mining. You know, um, we don't have uh, a national forest. We don't have um, monuments. Um, we are 
very cognizant of the fact that we have to make sure that we don't have, um, you know, any uh, cultural artifacts uh, or that sort of thing. Um, you know, and, and, and frankly, the fact that it's on private land and the fact that it's been mined previously uh, lends to the fact that permitting is simply easier. Um, the community that, uh, that lives on the land grant uh, are our partners. The, you know, our success is their success. And, um, you know, if we behave as good corporate citizens, as guests, as partners, um, then being on private land uh, is also going to, you know, work in our benefit uh, to make sure that we can advance. Uh, and, and the fact that we were able to attain permits uh, for our phase one drilling um, relatively quickly, uh, working with uh, all of the government agencies uh, is a testament to the fact that being on private land is key. Okay, super. So that's all positive. I would say thanks uh, for first introduction. And uh, we look really forward uh, then, uh, yeah, to see first drill results uh, from the confirmation holes. And I would say, keep it going because uranium is hot, uranium is shining bright and uh, hopefully your company too. And uh, I would appreciate because I'm a shareholder. <laughs> yeah, of course, Jochen. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, look forward to lots more of these. And I would encourage uh, all uh, the investors to, uh, you know, keep uh, keep looking at, um, at Twitter or X, um, you know, lots of information about the uranium uh, industry and trade there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just read a, an article a week or 10 days ago in the Wall Street Journal about the situation um, in, uh, in the United States mm -hmm. and, and how that's setting up. Uh, American Future Fuel is definitely one to watch. So thank you. Definitely. Super. David, thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was David Suda, the CEO of American Future Fuel, a new company we have here on the radar for the first time here at Commodity TV. Really check out the company. It's still very cheap, even it's a bit early days in hyphen, of course, because the company has already a solid data set, three and a half thousand drill holes. Yeah, with a lot of drilling here, I think it was 75,000 meters they did and uh, in the past. And but beware of it's a historical resource, so they have to confirm that. But it saves a lot of time and money for the company. And they know exactly where the stuff is laying. And don't forget, this would be open pitable in the start. And also in the depths, it looks very, very interesting and promising. So I'm a shareholder already. Check out the company. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.